transformed by prayer. When I was a little kid, I really wanted to ride a bike and it was really scary because I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to balance and pedal and everything. So my uncle, my uncle Charlie, came over to our house and was like, you know what, let's go practice. Let's go practice with that bike. I loved my bike. My bike was blue and it had this massive banana seat. And if you don't know what a banana seat is, you have to Google it because they were awesome. And when you knew how to bike really good, you could get a couple kids on that seat because they were so long. So when I hopped on my bike and my uncle would kind of run behind me and hold my, there was a little handle behind my fancy banana seat and he would hold it and then, but I was really worried that he would let go and that I would crash. So I was really nervous. So I would try to, and he'd say, look ahead, Mandy, look ahead. So I was hold, hold my handlebars and I'd be teetering and you know how wobbly you are when you start learning how to ride your bike. So I was riding and riding and then he said, I'm gonna let go. And I said, what? He's not going to let go. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to let go right away. I don't know if he should have told me. So I was wobbling around and I, I felt a little bit different. And I snapped my head back and I was looking at him because he let go. And now he was really far behind. And I was wobbling and I was riding and I was looking at him and I crashed right into a spruce tree. Now if you know a spruce tree, it's really fluffy and prickly and I just went right into those boughs nestled in there and they're all sharp and pokey and I totally crashed and I think I was crying and he had to come and comfort me and kind of encourage me to get back on that bike. But I think sometimes we focus on what's looking, what, what's behind us and we're not looking ahead and we need to keep our eyes on Jesus because if we focus on what, what's happening behind us, we're not going to see what's in front of us that we can, we can accomplish. Prayer. I have a text in the Bible that I love. And it is 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14 and 15. But before I read the text, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context here. It was uh, Solomon had built his temple, and the Lord appeared to Solomon at night. And the Lord said to him, If my people pray, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes are opened and my ears are attentive to their prayers offered in this place. So when I read this text, it's like God saying, just pray, just talk to me. Have you ever had a teenage child that doesn't want to talk to you, or a spouse or a loved one that doesn't want to speak and gives you the silent treatment. Well, it's like this with God saying, you know what, talk to me, just talk to me. I remember many times in my life that prayer was the only thing I could do when children grow up and make decisions you don't agree with. Prayer is pretty much the only thing you can do. I depend on prayer for so many things. Sometimes I have made terrible mistakes in my life, but paid the consequences of them. But when I ask God for His guidance, and I pray, and I trust Him to make the decisions for me, I can count on Him because nobody knows you better than God does and He will guide your life. He has, he has caused me to make good decisions for me, avoid disastrous situations in life and I trust Him and I obey. I depend on God through prayer and He invites me always to pray.
transformed by prayer. Majestic, imposing, astounding are just a few of adjectives used to describe the mighty strands of the Grand Canyon, the main tourist attraction in the state of Arizona, USA. Mountains, plateaus, gorges, deep grooves, cliffs and valleys constitute the wonderful Grand Canyon's topography. The building is incomparable to any other natural architecture of the world. Once, a father took his son to the Grand Canyon. The boy, upon approaching the edge of the cliff, said to his father, Let me hold your hand. The father replied with a smile, No, let me hold your hand. Seeking God in prayer does not mean reaching out to Him, but rather allowing Him to reach out to us with His sustaining arms. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that He cannot save, nor His ear heavy that He cannot hear. The motivation for prayer is an emotional, spiritual, and temporal need. If we are not asking or pleading, we are giving thanks. The prayer of thanksgiving expresses our gratitude for God's blessing and attending to our needs. Since needs is an intrinsic aspect of human nature, prayer invites us to reevaluate our self-perception and admit that we have essential and constant needs. We need other people, and we need a lot of other things to live, to develop, and to fulfill our dreams. This world of sin and death, along with its constant challenge to our frail nature, instill in us the need to constantly seek God in prayer. It is at this point that prayer begins to reveal its deep connection with the gospel of salvation. Christ's ministry for us presupposes that we human race was utterly desperate in need of salvation. That was our real and main need. All other necessities point to the most important need, that of a reconciliation with God. Sin clouds the soul's main need and deceives man into thinking that he is okay and that he has no need for prayer. But we all need salvation. When this quite essential need is met, all others fall into place. Prayer celebrates this experience and keeps alive the sense of our constant need. It depends on the gospel of salvation through faith in Christ. At this moment, pray to your loving Heavenly Father. Pray for your needs and praise Him for all the blessings that He has provided. Praise Him especially for Christ's sacrifice. As you pray, remember, prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock Heaven's storehouse where our treasure, the boundless resource of omnipotence. Thank you.